Welcome to Dudes the Bears podcast, episode 57. I'm Matt, and joining me are my co host, Joe. Hello. And Darren. Hello. Please visit dwbshow.com for all of our information. On this episode, we discuss the Silverado electric truck, the Talo urban adventure vehicle, the Yasa axial flux motor. In the new Bridgestone EV tire technology. Technology. Yeah, what, are we, what are we drinking? I don't know. What are we drinking? What do we got? So this is... There's two, there's two beers on the table? What well, is going we've had on this here? one. I just brought this as a backup in case this episode runs long. But uh, Runs long? So this is a hoof-hearted, tickling the ivories. Oh, I've heard of that one. IPA. Tickling the ivories. What is that? Uh, it's not a. Is it? It's what's his name? What's the movie? Where they like Rush? Actually, like yeah, it's a uh, Rush. The guy who plays Ant Man like the Rush. I don't know. It's a seven point two percent ABV brewed. It's an India Pale Ale brewed with Citra, Cashmere, and Comet. Uh, Comet. Hmm. Comet. And who farted is Columbus? Columbus. North, Columbus. North of Columbus. My, the kids always say, "Why are you saying who farted?" No, it's hoof, <laughs> hoof, H O F, farted, not who farted. <laughs> but if we're asking who farted, it's probably Dad. Probably Darren eating cookies. My house is probably my daughter, or the dog, my dogs. My dogs. She cloudy. The old doggies. The old double G's. Oh, God, that looks so good. It looks so good. Mm. They, I need, they I just need, have that. They have that smell. Like I need, they just, you know, it's a hoof. I need to find some of their uh, cold brew coffee again. Because that stuff is tasty. I'm really surprised that Jungle doesn't have it. I know. They don't? I've never seen it there, but for all I know, it's not in the beer section. It's like somewhere else in the store somehow. Is it Marengo, Ohio? Is that what that's called? I would pronounce it like that, yeah. Marengo, Ohio. Dabbling in the dark and the dark and dank. These old people, I swear to God. Can, can and then get them bifocals on. It, say? it says, O-H, dabbling in the dank and dark arts. Dank and dark arts. Yeah, I can't see. <laughs> <laughs> what? I'm going to pick up Mule Mirror over there. <laughs> <laughs> it's not Mule Mirror. I mean, not, I mean but... you are older than me, so <laughs> you are old people. Oh, uh, what a... Not by much, man. Not, Not by much, but you are older. I don't care if you're a day who, older than me, you're still older than me. Who, who's got a birthday coming and up And that, soon? just for clarification, that is Stormbringer. Storm. I'm sorry. Storm. Thrall. Okay. Lift that up, Matt. Can I you can't. I tried. Oh, I did it. Oh, I got, yeah. Get, you got to get it on camera. Yeah. I'm sorry, not Stormbringer. Oh. Next thing you got me oh. messed up. It's Doombringer. Oh. It's Thrall, World of Warcraft. For the horde, doom bringer. Okay, it's heavy, isn't it? It is. Darren, just take it and show him how light it is. <laughs> <laughs> Thing is actually heavy. I, t- I was got a real, a real leather, r- real leather it's wrap on th- it. Thundercats. <laughs> doom, doom hammer, doom hammer. <laughs> Thundercats. 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 Oh! <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> well, that episode went sideways. <laughs> <laughs> God, heavy. Up first <laughs> from Chevrolet dot com. It's the Honda. first ever all electric Silverado. Honda lit Honda Ridgeline. That's does, what it but, is. What was that? Uh, the that guy? looks way better than the. What was the guy? Was it on YouTube? He was like. Silverado. 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 Yeah. 
it's got tornadoes. What is it? It's got tornadoes in the engine or something. Um, so GM announced the uh, GM Chevrolet. Yeah. Uh, the first ever Silverado electric truck. So 400 miles of estimated range on a full charge, 785 pounds of foot torque at and 754 horsepower. Four and a half seconds, zero to 60, 10,000 pounds of towing Ooh. capacity. We, 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 need, we need to find the little special thing with what is wide open watts? What is that? It's, oh, it's with got, wide open watts? Because it's both for the power and so the speed. So it's probably the bigger wide, battery pack. Wide open. Is that like a, a software configuration an option? I of think the truck? wide open is what they're calling their software platform. Oh, okay. Which, why would that matter? I don't know. Yeah. Is Maybe. it at the bottom or something? It, it's in here. I like so, the color. Um, the color is really pretty. Uh, wide open watts is the Chevrolet equivalent of the watts to freedom mode offered. <laughs> on the Hummer? <laughs> on the what? <laughs> Say what? <laughs> on the battery Say electric what? GMC Hummer. Okay. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> so here's the Trail Boss Edition. I like it. The 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 EV work truck edition. Hmm. Oh, it's just those two. I thought it was more than one. No, there should be an RST. I thought there was, but no, it's not in here. Um, one thing is they did announce that there's not going to be like a economic ver- like an economical version. Like there's not going to be a sub fifty k. Like not. And even Tesla said because of inflation. They're not going to have a sub 50k Cybertruck now. It's probably going to be like 65, 70k for the base. Who knows when uh, they actually have one? Now. Yeah, we'll see. November, um, November of this year. So, home charging. So they're going to have level two home charging, which you know, cool. Most of them have that. Level one, 120 volt. Level two, 240 volt. On the go charging. Recharge while you're on the move uh, is easy. Pulling in, plugging, and charging up with over 50,000 available public charge stations. I think. They're going to be using the Tesla one eventually. I think they were using was it ChargePoint before that. Um, so they can uh, they estimate you can gain a hundred miles of range in as little as ten minutes with the My Chevrolet mobile app. You can do all the charging and the energy assistance features. I thought it was ChargePoint, wasn't it? That they were partnering with before Tesla. This is crazy. It is going to have up to 14 available camera views and up to 10,000 pounds of max towing, like we said before. But I think I read somewhere, and I don't think it's in here, this thing weighs like 8,000 pounds. Ooh, speaking of weight, I saw a TikTok the other day that's not relevant to this necessarily, but a guy was saying that there are certain bridges that he can't drive over in his Rivian because the Rivian weighs 7,000 pounds. I think this weighs 8,000. I believe uh, it. Yeah. EV, EV go. Evigo. Okay. Oh. Hmm. Um, so here's all the dimensions, which I'm not going to get into. The uh, oh, it does have a uh, all-wheel drive, so it has, it has individual four-wheel steer. It's too. E four-wheel drive, so delivers instantaneous torque to all four wheels in uh, simultaneously, giving you extra traction when you need it. Uh, with available four-corner air ride adaptive suspension, probably on the higher models, automatically adjust suspension to the road conditions, resulting in a smoother ride, and can even adjust the height of your Silverado EV to help you get in and out easier in case you need it. What what did it say this was? Like 0 to 60 and 4.5? 4. 4.5. Four, 4. That's dumb. For as heavy as it is, it is. I, I, okay, if... This is the 57th episode. If you're just now tuning in, I own a Model Y long range. It goes 0 to 60 in 4.8. This is a truck. That is fast. Heavy truck by the... by. And this by thing... It. But it also has four motors. Good Lord. Yours that's has, ridiculous. Yours has two and mine has two. For something so, that big to go that fast, someone is going to die. <laughs> it has the... If you hit something, for sure. God. So it's it's obviously using the Ultium uh, battery platform... Uh, which is what they've been using for all their electric vehicles. This is cool. 21 days of power with Altium Home. So kind of like Ford is having their home charging system. They're going to have something similar. 
Um, dang it, Tesla. With the Altium home charging unit, accessory charging unit, you'll be able to move power from your Silverado EV and your home, keeping the lights on for up to 21 days. Like, could it fully power a home no. for 21 days? No. Or are you just talking about the lights? Like, let's... like it, The, there, the there essential is a, stuff. There is a little caveat there, so they're, I'm they're, sure... They're, they're probably uh, 21 days of flipping their... Uh, Picture back and forth as fast as they can <laughs> on the screen. And it says, and soon you'll be able to move. Soon you may be able to store extra energy to save on electric bills and save and sell your electric back to the grid with the participating utility companies. So I'm assuming they're going to use the EV as your battery storage, which that just makes sense to me. Like I have a Model 3. My son has a Model 3. If my wife, like eventually she's probably going to have an electric vehicle. Um, if you have two or three or even one, We've already said this. Like that's a substantial amount of battery storage, even beyond like a Tesla Powerwall or other battery storage. It's each one of those electric vehicles is six to eight normal battery storage devices, like a Tesla Powerwall. Like they need to make this happen. All of them need to make this happen. Tesla, all of them. Like you need to be able to power your home back off of your your vehicle when you need to. It just makes sense. Amen. Uh, it does look some, good. It, oh, it, it does. It does look. It good. does not. You it don't, does. Is, why don't you like that? It is hideous. No, it, it looks, looks like good because, odd, because it doesn't have F O R D on the front. No, I. It has nothing to do with that. It is all it. It looks like a passenger car. You got that light bar. No. You got the projector. It looks headlights. like a passenger car that they just jacked up a little bit and put a truck bed on. Well, it is the Altium. It's that Altium platform is the same for. What the Hummer, the now this and yeah, but it's just it's too. I, I don't know. I don't like it. Get the e trunk. It's twenty four inch, inch wheels. wheels. on. This is what this is what I like. Check yeah, this out. That was pretty cool though. So it has this mid gate, and I'm assuming that glass part like it doesn't fold up anywhere. You just have to take it out, or maybe it does store somewhere. But like, see when that's folded down. You see those like shiny black metal pieces? Mm -hmm. Those are like the back of the seats that flip up. Yep. So if you you can have a 10 foot piece of something in here. So 10 foot lumber, like 10 foot whatever. Or, whatever. or if you're just putting there? plywood or something in there, it's like a stop. So it holds it against there. But this is like this, like when you talk about like the uh the gear tunnel and the Rivian, mm -hmm. I would much rather have something like this because you can yeah. fit a lot larger items. I mean, freaking, you got 10 foot of storage if you take all that out. That's crazy. And I think they show it. Um, 10 foot, 10 inches is what it was. 10 foot, 10 inches. Look at that. A couch. I think they have like a, they have like surfboards, a kayak. Yeah. So it's a, called the Multiflex Midgate with pass through with Multiflex tailgate and load stop, which, yeah, the tailgate is, again, it's like, check this thing out. Mm. So it's got. Beep, boop, boop. Boop, beep, and you can beep, flip beep, it down. Beep, 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 beep. Then you got the step. So many moving parts. That step holds 375 pounds of weight. Nice. Plus, if if it's folded up, you can just fold down that top part, and then you got like a, a work surface. Mm. Or like if you need a like a laptop or something, you can just fold you can just fold that top part down, and it's almost like a desk, mm. which they don't really show. But yeah, I mean, you got here like. But it, that it can also work as a stop, of course, for materials and stuff. But, yeah, 375 pounds. That's, that's pretty cool. Like, I haven't seen any of the other electric trucks do something like that with the tailgate or this, like, mid-gate pass-through thing. Definitely cool. I like the LCD displays on it. It's got the dual LCD displays. You got the gauge cluster that's LCD. Then you have the actual main display. Um as well definitely it's good looking like looks it's look clean it looks it, good it, from the inside it does use android audio or android auto and not anything else which what eh. it doesn't have both it just says i think it just says uh yeah google built in so i'm assuming that's android audio right or android auto huh which wouldn't that what that would be i don't know what else it would be i would still think they would have like the normal <sighs> Yeah, you I don't know. know. I don't know if they have like their normal stuff or if it's just all driven by Google. UI looks nice. 
It's not terrible. Then they, you know, of course, they're talking about their Super Cruise, which is their their drive assistant assistance. Hmm. Enjoy hands-free driving and trailering across four hundred thousand miles of compatible roads. I just, I don't know, and no one is cl- is going to be as close to Tesla on this, but it still could be good. I don't like it. You. Altify. Altify is the general motor software platform that will usher in a new era of software-defined vehicle experiences and services. It will enable seamless delivery of upgrades, personalized options, and new and exciting apps to, del- to drivers on demand. Plus, regularly push software improvements, I'm assuming, over the air. So that's what they're going to call their like over-the-air update system. So the Altify. Hmm. Chevrolet, if you're listening... I don't like this. It's ugly. Just send me one <laughs> and change my mind. Man. That's how you do it. So the, so the, here's the thing. Reservations are currently closed. Sign up for updates and stay connected. So it's going to be like the Ford F-150. Like you're not going to be able to get it or even any electric truck at this point. Yeah. Have, and have you seen? Have you guys seen a lightning like you, on the road? You mm-hmm. can. Like I, like I someone, oh yeah, like a normal like person, four or five different ones, yeah. But hmm. like you, you can't even price this right now because yeah. the reservations are closed. Like you can't even go on price and see what this thing is going to be. Seventy six thousand nine twenty four. I mean, I'm assuming because there's no fifty k option, it's going to be just as much as a Rivian at this point. But if I want to spend that much money, I'm just going to buy me an Amazon van. <laughs> the Rivian. I think van. those are like one hundred and twenty, aren't they? That thing is awesome. Make it into a little camper. <sighs> It's coming. Next up from TaloTrucks.com is the Talo Urban Adventure Vehicle. So this is a like a mini truck, I guess. It says it's like small. The footprint is smaller than a, a Tacoma, but it has the same towing capacity. So yes, they they compared it to a Mini Cooper. Yeah, it says, we redesigned the EV truck footprint and functionality from the ground up by marrying the state of the art in electrification and advanced safety with Toyota Tacoma capability, Tesla-like range and efficiency, and the footprint of a Mini Cooper. Talo is the most compact, practical, and technically advanced truck, meeting the needs for a high, highly functional, powerful EV pickup, equally suited to navigation downtown and hauling people and gear out of town. Like It looks super cool. And I think it has like a kind of a mid gate thing too, if I remember correctly. Um, four doors, five adults, sixty inches, same truck bed length as the Toyota Tacoma, larger than a Rivian R one T. Oh, really? But it's only one hundred and fifty two inches in total length, which is the same as a Mini Cooper. <laughs> That's crazy. What's the Tacoma? Wow. 212 versus that's, 152. That so, is crazy. What's so the if you put if you put five adults in there, you're gonna yeah. Are they gonna be like a hundred pound adults? Well, just just look though. This is all engine. Yeah. All engine. True. This has probably got electric motors, you know, here and here. So that's yeah, pretty crazy. Um designed to do less with more. Zero to sixty in four seconds. It's zippy. 350-mile range, 500 horsepower. So standard crew cab, five-seat, five-foot bed, capacity with a configurable mid-partition that either increases increases bed size to <clears throat> accommodate a 4 by 8 sheet of plywood with the tailgate up or allows for additional seating for up to eight passengers. <laughs> Dude, this thing looks it's cool. It's got a big rumble seat back there. Built to ha- handle everything you need. 60 inches of truck bed. I like it. It's got like a little tonic cover on there. Hopefully that works better oh, than the Rivian. Tunnel. Oh, it's got a gear. It's like a gear tunnel too. I didn't see that when I first looked at the thing. There's the plywood. Oh, their glass don't come out in the back. It just drops. Yeah, right now. it's not like oh, the. Oh, there's uh, the, there's the pop up seat. Oh, and it's even got oh, hard an SUV. Cover. That's pretty cool. Wee. I don't know about hanging the bikes over the. Yeah, back, but it looks like <laughs> all, it looks all, like the back of the tailgate was like it's got like some kind of. Yeah, finish all on I it. think about is the. Uh, Nuts for the front hubs <laughs> scratching your paint up. Yeah. So it's specifically designed storage tunnel under the bed doubles as a footwell, 
for a third row of seats, enabling Tello to accommodate up to eight passengers. Belongings are safely secured by the tonneau cover, making Tello the perfect vehicle to safely work. Store work items and weekend gear. Wow, on the go. 350 mile. That's pretty good. 350 yeah. mile range. 20 minutes. That's 20 minute, 20 to 80% fast charging. Pretty good. Uh, utilizing the latest and advanced technology sensors. Predict. Didn't say how many cameras it has, but. It's got enough. That looks, like, that looks like that. I mean, that's a real prototype. Looks like somebody's garage, but yeah. nonetheless, a real prototype. So, the big question. So, pre order. Uh, place your order truck here. Fully refundable deposit, one hundred and fifty-two dollars. Oh, I should it, put my deposit down. One hundred and fifty-two dollars because it's one hundred and fifty-two inches. <laughs> That's funny. But I think it does say, "What's it in here?" It's somewhere. It's here. We go. Forty-nine ninety-nine. Forty-nine nine ninety-nine. Not including <laughs> savings via state and federal tax incentives. So it's so forty-four hundred pounds. You could take what seven grand off of that. Top speed, 125 miles per hour. So I think it's 7,500, isn't it, for the is federal it? tax credit? It's faster than that flying car. Yeah. Dude, like, I I would I would love to see one of these. Like, 20-minute charge. Like, this thing's cool. Yeah. But it's like, did they give any timelines? That's what I didn't see. I don't yeah. remember seeing one when I looked through it. I mean, it could be four years before we see this thing. That's only $152. Only, only. I think you can reserve a Cybertruck for two fifty. Yep. And a Rivian for a thousand. Yeah, I but think. Rivian's up in their produ- production. I right think now, you can so. you can actually like Rivian, I, I got an email. It's like they have like certain configurations of the R one T you can get now. Oh wow. So apparently like either people didn't buy them or they just have some that they were like extra. So if you got an extra one hundred sixty thousand land, and I told you guys like I'm not buying anything unless they have a local service center. Yeah. Like who knows when something like this is going to have a local service center to us? Yeah. Whereas like Tesla already has one, Rivian is getting ready to open one. Like if I can't take it to a local service center when there's a warranty issue, I don't. I don't want. I wonder it. if you could take off the the two tops up there at the top. No, it looks like it's glass, but I don't know. That'd be cool. A solar panel. It's a cool looking vehicle. Like I know we've seen what the canoe. Like yeah, I like. What that. happened yeah, to that? Yeah. Like I, I think that's kind of. We just, I think they're having some issues. Aren't the they? The same thing is going to happen to yeah. this thing. Unfor- probably. Or somebody will swoop it up and say, You're "I not just making this. for what this is in the, in the small the small footprint that it is." The only way they're going to make it, in my opinion, is if they're coming in at like forty k. Because no one else is hitting that 40K mark right now. Rivian can't do it. Tesla can't do it. Ford, GM. GLA. No one else can do it. Wow. Even even the canoe was like, wasn't it like 45, 46 or something? That was just, that was the estimate. Yeah. Unless they can come in and beat everybody else, they're not going to, I just don't, I, don't, I mean, and not that anybody else is going to be probably close to 50K right now, but no. at least if you buy a Chevy or a Ford or a Tesla, you know you're going to be able to get it fixed if it breaks. Yeah, but here's the problem <clears throat> with Chevy and Ford and Dodge and whoever else that has these big, has stuff everywhere. Are these technicians going to be trained good enough to true. be able to work on this stuff yet? True, true, true. It's a very good point, Darren. I mean, are they going to have, like, one person in each of these places? <laughs> yeah. I mean, or do you have to go to a specific place? Because we only have one person in Ohio that can work on this, so you got to take it to blah blah blah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like, that's, that's a good point. Well, I hope, I hope, I hope it works out. I will, I would love. I, we need more competition. I would love to see something like this on the road as an option. I would consider it, especially like because I, I, I don't want to get rid of my Model Three, but I do. I would like to have a truck, an electric truck, and this would be like yeah. as compact as it is. Hell, I mean, April could drive this. As her yeah. daily driver, and be fine with it. We shall see. Up next from yasa.com is the future of performance electric vehicle propulsion. So they are introducing their Yasa axial flux motor. You know they're owned by uh, BMW. Oh my 
Mercedes. Or Mercedes? Is it Mercedes? Yes. It's down here, isn't it? Yes, Mercedes. Yeah, you're right. Sorry. So they are a wholly owned subsidiary of Mercedes. Uh, it's an ultra high performance electric vehicle motor capable of moving you faster and further due to its revolutionary topology. Um, what was that? That's the YMCA's logo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's just missing one line. Isn't I know. It? That's crazy. <laughs> Um, That's what I saw when I squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> so Yasa Motors introduced the Yasa Axial Flux Motor, an ultra-high-performance electric vehicle motor with revolutionary topology, as we said. Um, it has it offers up to four times more torque That's and crazy. double the power densities compared to current technologies. It is 50% lighter and 20% of the depth of a typical radial machine. It was born out of Oxford University, has been pushing the performance EV revolution for over 10 years. I don't know if you guys looked at the history. Like, they've been in a bunch of different cars um, for the last 10 years. Like, before, I, I don't know if it was before Mercedes bought them or if they were always Mercedes. I don't, I'm not sure. Uh, it provides an unmatched electrical driving experience and opens up new possibilities for vehicle designers. It can have up to 480 horsepower, two to three times the power density of a non-axial machine. The design allows for increased torque density, delivering up to four times the torque density of other EV motors. Uh, it has a direct oil cooling and shorter windings, providing better performance and thermal management. The motor takes up 50% less volumetric space and weighs 50% less than the radial equivalent, offering new design possibilities and efficiency improvements. The motor's segmented armature and simplified design result in reduced complexity Lower material cost and environmental sustainability. Uh, Mercedes acquired them on July twenty seconds of twenty twenty one. So they so they definitely existed before that, right? Yes. Um, it's pretty cool. So they're talking about um, when you look at so the, the left is like a comparable EV motor from like a Tesla or whatever, and then there's. The only thing I will say, like, there's a video on here that I watched yesterday. That's not the full housing. Like, right. there is a bigger housing that that goes into. So it, it's still about 50% of the one on the left. I just wish they showed the full representation because that has to go into something else. It's yeah, but, not the full but, thing. But the 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 brake horsepower between the two are... Oh, yeah. Definitely crazy. Um, yeah. yeah, this Dr. Tim Woolmer is the... Uh, Kind of Oxford University, the brainchild behind it. Um, like I said, more power dense than the competitors. They get into some of the math, which we're not going to get into today. But so we we're really comparing this to a Tesla electric so, motor, and not like all the other brands electric motors that are well, currently out so there. Well, so like this is right. This when so they're showing this right here. So that one on the right is like a an equivalent EV motor. Tesla or electric motor today. It's got the windings. And, and then you got the left one, but they're not showing the full, that, that, that goes into another housing. Yeah. Why they're not showing it compared to that. I don't know because it's a little deceiving. Um, if the, and may like, see, that's the full housing. Like there's definitely other pieces to it. So if they're only comparing like, the certain segment of it. I, I don't know what they're trying to do. It's, 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 it's it seems a little deceiving to me. Mm. Why not show it apples to apples? Because even then it's still smaller, like yeah. way smaller. Um, yeah. They're talking about the reduction of complexity in materials um, because they're able to more efficiently use the windings, especially the segmented aperture uses less materials, it's more efficient, it offers better heat dissipation, they use oil cooling instead of liquid cooling. Um, hmm. Yeah, I think, uh, where the video is. <clears throat> I think that's just their, yeah, it's just their story. <laughs> Yeah, it might be this one. Up. It does look like the YMCA, <laughs> for sure. Yeah, this just goes about their – yeah, so they were part of they, – they helped uh, the Ferrari, the, Strat the Ferrari Stratadale. Remember Spirit of Innovation? Yes. We talked about the Spirit of Innovation. Yeah. 
So they use one of their they use their their motors in that. The Jaguar Vector for the uh, boat, the EVOA Marine Propulsion, the the Curtis electric motorcycle. Uh, they have vehicles in Pikes Peak. Uh, Drayson, Koenigsegg, Jaguar. Like, they've been around for a while. Mm. It's definitely cool stuff. Like, I mean, you think about it. You put one of those on each wheel or even the two front or the two back. So you could do all four or just the two front and the two back. Like, yeah, but reduce weight, better performance, better cooling. Um, but then you're going to have to get some better uh, traction control because I mean you put that much that torque that much torque that at the much wheel torque at each wheel. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely cool you're, stuff. You're burning through tires pretty quick. Yeah, that's a that's a good segue, man. Because yeah. we're going to talk about some tires in a, mm. in a few. <laughs> <Not> there. <laughs> Last up for episode fifty-seven is from. Bridgestone Tires Americas. So they announced their new Bridgestone Taranza, Taranza EV Grand Touring Tire for electric vehicles. And it makes their world debut at Electrify Expo. So this was back on May 19th. And basically they've come up with a new composite material for some of it's recycled. For electric vehicle tires, which makes the tread last longer, increases handling and other performance. So they, like I said, they just introduced this, and that and it features their Bridgestone Enlighten technology, making it the first tire in North America to incorporate this technology. It's designed to account for the unique dynamics of EVs, so excellent tread life, minimal road noise, and comfort wet confident wet handling. Because EVs are typically heavier. Than normal vehicles, they tend to wear tires much quicker. So the these compounds and other materials that they're using will help alleviate that, hopefully. Uh, initially, it's going to come in five sizes for the Tesla Model 3, S, X, and Y, and the Ford Mustang Mach-E. And then there are th- additional 13 sizes coming in early 2024. The Enlightened Technology focuses on focuses on all season performance, longer wear life, and the use of renewable and recycled materials in the tire production. It incorporates materials such as carbon black from end-of-life tires, so taking old tires, shredding them up, and reusing those materials, synthetic rubber from recycled plastics, renewable soybean oil, and rice husk silica. Mm. Uh, They plan to expand this technology across their entire product line in the future, and introduce Peak Life, a polymer technology that enhances tread life resistance and extends tire life. The tire maintains a long mileage range per charge, offers a quiet ride, and provides wet braking and handling comparable to leading OE tiring, uh, touring tires. Uh, it incorporates 50% renewable and recycled materials, aligning with Bridgestone's sustainability goals. Its manufacturing manufactured in facilities in North Carolina and Mexico, which have been upgraded to accommodate the new enlightened technology. Uh, The development of the Taranza EV tire aligns with Bridgestone's E8 commitment, focusing on energy, ecology, ecology, and ease for their future developments. What, what, Darren, what you got? Well, I'm just wondering, like, with these tires, if, you, if you're going to be putting them on your Tesla or whatever, um, are they going to, do they design the, like, the, doesn't the Tesla tire have, like, something on the inside of it? The foam. That helps. The OEM take, tires take, do. Take road noise away. Which are the. Uh, I mean, did you notice a big difference in your car between the noise? Mine are definitely louder. Um, so the ones that it came with were the. Uh, what do you have? Mine came with a Goodyear. Now I have the Pirelli Elect. So mine came with Pirelli. Scorpions, though, right? Summer tires? Yeah, I forget what model they were. And they had the foam things in them because when I took them off, I seen them. But I got the Michelin mm-hmm. All-Season 4s. Mm-hmm. And they're definitely, you can 
they're definitely more road noise to them. But I can I can use them in the winter. <laughs> but but I'm wondering if like like they're going to start getting into where they're adding this extra layer of like the like noise dampening into the yeah. tires. I don't know if they're going to do that within the tire like they did with the uh, the Pirellis, or if it's just because the compounds they're using they're inherently going to be okay with the noise. It reduced noise. It says that it, excellent steering feel and controlled noise. So, doesn't say anything about adding additional like noise dampening in the tire in here. But I mean, because that's one one nice thing about the EVs itself. You you don't have that that motor noise anymore. Right, but you, that just means you hear the road. <laughs> right, or you turn your radio and like mine. Higher. I don't know about yours, but ever since I I switched from the Pirellis to the Michelin. All seasons. Uh, when I go like seventy miles an hour, like right on the dot, like sixty-five is fine, sixty-eight is fine, seventy-two, seventy-five is fine. But at seventy miles an hour, I get this weird wind noise. I don't know if it's just the way that's hitting the front of the car, mm. if it's the tires. I never noticed it before. And even when April was driving the other day, she was like, "What is that noise?" I was like, "That's just it's just the wind noise hit when it hits the car. It's only at like that specific speed. It's really." It's like 69, 70, 71 miles an hour. It's like super noticeable. But outside of that, you can't really hear it. But I'm just like, it's it's weird. I don't know if it's road noise from the tires or just from the hmm. car itself. What, what I was going to say about um, the road noise, it could be that they've created the tread pattern on the tire in such a way that is lower. Like a dampener. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you got to think when you hear a truck going down the road that has big mud tires on oh, it, yeah. you hear the rawr, 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 rawr. so they they have means of creating the tread pattern to make right. it quieter. And I bet that's a nice fine and it, and it's, detail it's more because to, it's, you got it's the tread pattern plus the material composition too. I think. Yeah, yeah but you also got to add water into that that aspect because if if you have you know, if they're an all-season tire, you're going to have to, to brave yeah. Wet, all, all the seasons. Yeah. So. But it's cool. Like, I think we're going to see more and more of this from the tire manufacturers. Yeah. And then, uh, especially the material composition is one. Yeah, because I would hate to see a, a set of knobby, a knobby tires on an EV because of the weight. I mean, you just chew those things to pieces. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's been one of the big, not big, but one of the complaints for electric vehicles is, is they burn through tires so much quicker than an ICE vehicle. There's a carbon footprint to that. And a lot of people say, well, that's even worse than the fuel in some cases. So yeah, we're but, seeing these, these new technologies in tires and compounds and especially recycled compounds. Right. It'll offset that, hopefully. Hopefully. Yeah, hopefully. I mean, it's nice to see that, that they are using recycled stuff. but Yeah. Up to 50%, it says, in these yeah. tires. So maybe we'll see more in the future. All right. Thank you for joining us for Episode 57. We will see you in the next episode.